dear, dear colleagues, as you can see by the welcome, we have the chairman of the Verhofna Rada and my dearest friend, Ruslan Stefanchuk, with us today. Ruslan, I know how difficult it is to leave Ukraine at the moment, and I know how important it is for us that you are here today. Welcoming you here in Strasbourg two months after we met in Kiev confirms the strong and unique link between the European Parliament and the Verhofna Rada. Your fight for freedom, for democracy, for the values that bind us as Europeans is our fight. And what Ukraine has had to endure was unthinkable a few months ago. But your people have inspired the world. Your courage, your determination, and your defiance in the name of liberty will be spoken about for generations to come. Europe... <laughs> Europe stands with Ukraine. Our parliament stands with the Rada. Europeans opened their borders, their homes and their hearts to six million Ukrainians forced to flee their homeland. We have sent military, financial, political and humanitarian support and we will continue. We cannot lose momentum, we cannot lose focus, we cannot turn away and allow war fatigue to set in. Dear Ruslan, when we say the European Parliament stands with you, it is a message that bears enormous responsibility for us. We want to assure you that we will continue to support you with any assistance needed to push back against the consequences of the Russian invasion. And we will try to help push peace forward, a real peace. In Europe, we understand only too painfully that peace without liberty, peace without justice, is no peace at all. The European Parliament will also continue actively supporting you as you apply for EU candidate status. We know how important it is to send the clearest of signals that Ukraine's place is within our European family to tell everyone that Ukraine is Europe. We also need to start a proper discussion on the recovery and rebuilding of Ukraine. As I said in Kiev, we will help rebuild every city and every town from Mariupol to Irpin, from Kherson to Kharkiv. And we will hold war criminals accountable. So thank you, dear Ruslan, for the efforts of the Verhofna Rada and your personal commitment in sustaining a vision of a European future for your country against all odds. Dear Chairman, dear Ruslan, the floor is yours. Slava Ukraini. Highly respectable Mrs. President of the European Parliament, esteemed Ms. President of the European Commission, dear colleagues and friends. On the 1st of March of 2022, in the first days of a large-scale aggression against Ukraine committed by Russia, together with President Volodymyr Zelensky, I had an opportunity to address the European Parliament. I very well remember those moments because I was choking in my, with emotions in my throat because the most horrible and most large-scale war started in Ukraine. The same emotions I am having now, but 
due to different reasons because today I am standing among friends and I have for the first time over the last 105 days have a chance to address the European Parliament openly and I have this feeling of support of the entire Ukraine. Therefore, I sincerely thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you for being with Ukraine. I thank you sincerely for your trust in Ukraine. And thank you very much that Ukraine is Europe. In the first days of the war, we were all shocked because nobody believed we didn't believe that in the middle of the 21st, 21st century, in the middle of Europe, a brutal, undeclared and horrible war can, can be started. And I understand the entire world was shocked and befuddled. But we started acting. We started with the most important things. We started getting united. We were uniting uh, at the level of the state, at the level of the people, at the level of levels of power and we understand and realize understood and realized that the most important thing today is to preserve to keep ukraine to do everything possible to make sure ukraine perseveres and we wanted to unite the entire civilized world around ukraine because we we're aware that this was not just the war against ukraine that was the war against the values against the principles against the foundations of the world order and therefore we are standing as one for 105 days defending both Ukraine and the entire civilized world. On the 1st of March, the European Parliament has decidedly condemned the actions of the Russian Federation. The European Parliament has always been a powerful voice of the entire European community and perhaps one of the highest moral authorities that exists on the European continent today. I would like to thank on behalf of each and every Ukrainian that you were the first one who declared its powerful voice in such a consolidated manner in support of Ukraine. You were with us from the very first days. We all remember that the President Roberta Metsola, it was she when Kiev was still besieged and when the enemy forces were in Irpin and Bucha, in Hostomel and Borodyanka. She arrived in, Ukra in Ukraine and she addressed the Ukrainian parliament from the very heart of Kiev. And therefore, Mrs. President, I'd like to thank you once again for your courage, for what you did then. We had powerful words of support of Ukraine from you. Then you spoke about hope. You called upon entire world to act and you quoted the words of a great Ukrainian poet, Taras Shevchenko. You address the parliament with the words, fight and you will win. Mrs. President, we are fighting and we will win and we'll do it together. Now, about what Ukraine had to face over the last 105 days, in addition to the enemy aggression, in addition to numerous missiles that are flying and landing on the heads of ordinary Ukrainians, and a huge number of those killed and wounded and maimed, we are seeing that the Russian Federation is continuing to move this war way beyond the Ukrainian borders, and they're doing it through what they normally do, through their lies. The Kremlin is talking about the liberation, quote unquote, of people of Donbas, of the people of Donbas. At the same time, they annihilate, they wipe out the biggest city in the Donbas, Mariupol. Russia is saying that they're pretending, defending the Christian values. At the same time, they actually burn down the Svetogor uh, church skit. They uh, are claiming they're trying to prevent the world food crisis. At the same time, they steal 
grains on the occupied territories. What Ukraine is doing in to counter it, that counteract that Ukraine is doing is counteracting it with belief and truth. We're talking about military crime, war crimes. We're talking about the genocide of the Ukrainian people. We're saying that Ukrainians are being killed now only because simply they are Ukrainians and the army is killing them. The army that does not respect any laws and any uh, conventions of war. And we have to be all aware of that. But we are going to speak this truth and we're going to speak about the responsibility, about the responsibility before history, before the humankind, before the responsibility before the future and this responsibility should occur and I thank you for the initiative I thank many countries for the initiatives the countries represented in the European Parliament that you initiated the International Criminal Court investigation against the Russian Federation and we would like to have this just verdict we'd like those who are to blame who are guilty in this criminal war that they are punished and they would rebuild at their cost what they damaged. This is a fundamental principle of our unity. It's a fundamental principle. And that justice will happen, undoubtedly, because what we want we, the countries that stand in favor of the world order. But we have to understand also that today in Ukraine, we have more than 14 million people that had to be displaced within Ukraine. Eight million became of them became internally displaced pe people and six million of Ukrainians are outside of Ukraine. And I would like to use this opportunity to think to thank all your countries who opened not only the doors of their homes but also their hearts for all Ukrainians. I sincerely thank all of your great peoples. I thank the entire 500 million people of the European Union who accepted Ukrainians and uh, enabled their survival under these difficult conditions. Thank you. Dear colleagues, the important question is what's going to happen next? I'm not going to conceal the fact that my mission now, traveling around many European countries and talking to European parliaments, including the European Parliament, is to convince each and every one of you that Ukraine is worthy of being granted the candidate status for the European Union. We're clearly aware that this is just a candidate status. We are clearly aware and guarantee we're clearly we are clearly aware and guarantee that we, having received this impetus, this political message, are prepared to work further, but are prepared to work quickly and qualitatively as we did when we were filling in the uh, survey for the candidacy status for the European Union. But it's a very important impetus for us, the Ukrainian people. It's very important for the Ukrainian people to hear this powerful message from, the Euro from Europe. The message, the essence of which is that what you are doing is not in vain. And we see your fighting and Therefore, friends, if the if on the 24th of June we're not going to get this message, then it, this will be the message that Putin will get. And he will clearly understand that he can be totally going forward without any punishment. Therefore, I'm asking you, let's do everything possible that on the 24th of June we'll see a watershed day, an important day for us and our joint great victory. We also ask you to exert a, a additional impact on the Russian Federation. First and foremost, the sanctions. It's very difficult to stop the war that we are sponsoring. I would like to thank you for supporting all sanction packages. But if the war is continuing, then perhaps more has to be done so that the war 
could become unbearable for Putin, impossible for Putin, so he could stop because they would not have funds to fund his war. I understand that sometimes it becomes a burden, huge burden uh, for your budgets of your countries. But do believe me that otherwise, if we don't do that, the price of defeat is going to be way, way bigger. And we have to do everything possible to stop this war economically as well. Uh, dear friends, I would like to address you as a parliamentarian to parliamentarian. You are the representatives of a 500 million strong, huge, great European nation. You represent different parties, various parties. You represent Europe. I appeal to you with a request. Ukraine is ready and prepared to stand on guard for our common values, common principles, common prospects, because Ukrainians today are fighting for them on the battlefield. Therefore, I'm asking you very much, let's do everything together that this new history that Ukraine is writing with blood, we would add a very simple addition written with the pen that Ukraine is a candidate for the European Union. Dear friends, I sincerely believe that you, the European Union would approve this historic decision in favour of this unity, in favour of this solidarity, in favour of the fact that we see our future similarly and see our values similarly. Dear colleagues, because our unity, this is the motivation for us. Our unity is the is the push for them that we are united and then we will always be united dear colleagues only unity today could be the guarantee of our joint peace common peace i'm really grateful to you to your peoples i'm very grateful to all who fight together with ukraine glory to ukraine and glory to united great europe Thank you so much. Grazie, Hafna Aziz Ruslan. Grazie, Kiftista. Tara, Mill Standing Ovation, Twila Li Inti, Ricevait Ahna Edin Miak, Malukrania. Umusani Fu Abel, Lukrania Toro Trebiha, Isani Suspendi Seduta, Alftit Minuti, Sabish in the Stone Preparau Al Premio Lux. Un bat fin nofsia in complu bil voti, ġifiri tunati kaċans ħalli n'organizzaw ftitirwi, na grazzi.